Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to come on today and do a very quick video if I can. Um, I've proven incapable of that in the past, but I'm really gonna try today uh, because I have a really big book haul and I decided to basically completely disregard my book buying ban and I ended up buying a lot of books. Um, I don't regret it because I've already read two of them and sometimes you just get into a bit of a reading slump and you you really need like a big book haul to kind of excite you and to get you back on track with your reading. So yes, I have a lot of um, weirdly enough Russian classics to talk about and some British classics, modern classics, as well as some contemporary books. So I'm going to be getting into that and thank you for watching. I first want to talk about the two contemporary books that I got. The first one was Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Au. You might have seen this on Bookstagram or Booktube. Um, this is has been pretty popular. It recently came out. It's published by Fitzcarraldo in the UK. I sadly could not get it, but this edition is very pretty as well. It's by uh, New Directions, I believe. And yes, I already uh, read this one too. It's a short little novella. You can really read it in one sitting. Uh, I loved it. I gave it five stars. It's very quiet, really introspective. It follows a mother and daughter as they travel through Japan. Uh, yes, I recommend this to everybody. I'm not going to talk too much more about it because I want to talk about it in my April uh, books video, but this was definitely worth, um, worth the money. Um, I'll just say that. So yeah, that was cold enough for snow. And then I also got uh, Elena, no Elena Knows? Elena Knows? Yeah. Um, Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, uh, which is on the International uh, Booker shortlist for this year. And uh, Claudia Pinheiro is apparently like, I think she's like the third most published author in Argen Argentina or something, or like the one of the most famous crime writers at least. Uh, I hadn't heard of her, but I'm glad that I... Um, have heard of her now because I also read this one recently. I also really liked it. Um, it's, you know, kind of an interesting take on a crime novel. It follows an elderly woman with Parkinson's as she tries to get to the bottom of uh, the recent death of her daughter. Uh, yes, I'll also be talking about this in my April books, but this is also uh, a strong recommend from me and I'm sure people have already seen it and have seen all the praise for it, but Yes, I'm glad that it um it lived up to the hype for me. So yeah, that was also a very good purchase. Next, I uh, got one that I've been meaning to read for a very, very long time, which is a Victor Serge book, because I know that um, NYRB publishes uh, quite a number of his books, and I wanted to read this one in particular for a very long time, and I it was sitting on my wish list for such a long time, and I just, I saw it in a bookstore, and I said, okay, I, I gotta get it. Um, but yeah, this is the case of Comrade Talayev, I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, and it is set during uh, Stalin's purges, and I think, but I think this was published after um, Victor Serge's death. I think it was published, uh, yes, in 1950. Um, but yeah, I just want to, this will be my introduction to this author, and I hope that it's a good place to start, but I would think so, because I've seen some good reviews of this, and I love a good Soviet Stalinist era book, not in like a like a glamorizing way by any means, but I just find it very interesting to read about. And I think it's really interesting to learn more about um, a lot of these different Soviet authors. Um, a lot of them were, you know, in exile and they had very interesting lives and a lot of their work was hidden or smuggled out of Russia or whatever it may be. So. I like um, reading from this period of history as well. Uh, yeah, I will definitely be talking about this on my channel. Maybe I'll pick it up at the end of April. I don't know. I like had this random idea the other day where I was like, why don't I just read only NYRB editions uh, for the rest of April? So I'm really tempted to do that now because I have got such good NYRBs recently. But yes, anyway, really quickly, I have one more NYRB from this not from this video like i have more but from this particular section of this video which is happy moscow by andrei platonov and i have read the foundation pit by him and i want to read his other books as well i think nyrb has published soul or souls i think it's called 
Uh, I don't remember. But yes, I hadn't seen this one before. This is Happy Moscow. And this actually has a couple works in this particular book. Um, so this particular story was not published during uh, Platonov's lifetime. It says it was, it first appeared in Russian in 1991. Um, and then in this edition that NYRB has published, they included a screenplay, um, an essay about ecological catastrophe, and two short stories in which some of the same characters appear or reappear. So, wow, this sounds amazing. I take it back. I might have to read this one next. <laughs> As you can see, I'm really excited about these books. But yeah, Andrei Platonov is a really another very uh, interesting Soviet uh, writer. And actually, I I discovered him really late. Like I I discovered him because I watched this movie called Beanpole by Kantemir Bulagov, who is a Russian director, and he's like pretty young, like up and coming. But he's had like two movies out, and in one of his interviews or a lot of his interviews, he always brings up Andrei Platonov and how he was, how he is influenced by him. So that's how I first heard about Andrei Platonov and I'm really glad that I decided to pick him up and I'm of course glad that my trusty NYRB is like ready to serve me all of these wonderful editions. Like, oh my God, this is so cool. This has like unpublished stuff and yeah. So definitely gonna be talking about this one. I might just start reading this one in the next few days, honestly. So next I got an Archipelago Editions book that I've been eyeing for a while. Um, this is The Dog of Sith Wall by Sadat Hassan uh, Manto. And he, I think, was a very famous um, Muslim author from India. And he writes about experiences of partition, particularly. And I wanted to get it, uh, read this, pick this up, because I haven't really read that many books about partition. I think I've always read about it in like academic settings like for class or in academic articles and stuff so I wanted to like get into uh, literature about it and I think that there's a lot of really interesting authors to be discovered a lot of interesting stories to be discovered so yes this is supposed to be like a really sprawling novel it says that it follows like a bunch of different characters living in Bombay and yes, it, but it says that he's, um, this author is best known for his uh, examinations of violence, horror, and reverberations from the partition. So it might be a bit of a tough read. Um, let me know if anyone has read this and what you thought. Um, but yes, I am ultimately really excited to pick this up. And yeah, I hope that this leads me into other uh, reading recommendations, experiences. Yeah. Okay, of course I had to go take a phone call, so I hope that <laughs> this setup hasn't changed too much. But next I got... Hmm... I got two Kingsley Amos books. So you might have seen, I read this back in March, Lucky Jim, and I really liked it. I had gotten it from the library, and I didn't expect to like it so much, and I just had to have a physical copy. So I've already read this one, but I... I'm looking forward to rereading it. I think I will reread it for fun. But I also got another Kingsley Amos, and if I like this one as well, I might end up picking up his other um, books. I think he has, he definitely has at least like one or two others um, from NYRB, but he has so many other things that he's published. Um, yeah, I just think that he's really funny and. I think that his humor might not be for everybody. Some people might be annoyed by it, but I I think it's really funny. So this one is shorter, much shorter than Lucky Jim. It's about like a hundred something pages. And it's about a bunch of um, elderly people who have retired in this cottage and says now it is Christmas and the children and grandchildren are coming to visit their ailing elders. They don't know what lies in store before the story ends. None of us do. So I think this will be like very, very funny. I love just meeting a big, like goofy, wacky cast of characters. And look at this cover. I mean, that's just, they have the best, they found the best covers for his books. I don't know how they did it, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to uh, get to those. Okay, the last two books. So maybe this will actually be a short video. Um, I got this really 
really old, like emphasis on old edition of um, Swan's Way, um, which is, you know, the, the first um, part of In Search of Lost Time by Proust. I haven't read any Proust. I don't know when I will get to this. I think it's like a true commitment. Um, I never ever thought that I would read Proust. I never wanted to. I thought it was too long-winded for me, too annoying, but I've actually seen a lot of people on Bookstagram reading it and they seem to really enjoy it, uh, particularly Swan's Way. I think the second, the second part of this, or maybe the third one, hmm, one of them is like about um, the young boy in his adolescence and he like obsesses over like young like other girls and I think that I won't like that one but this one is supposed to be good um but yeah and I this um I don't know this edition like it's not particularly flashy but it's kind of quaint and it's l so yellowed like oh my god I don't know what they did this book but um it must be super old but it's only from 1970 and yet it's like so worn out but yeah I um I just had to get this and I'm excited to read this eventually though this is gonna be on the back burner I don't think I can get to this now I'm in a very Russian mood as you can see <laughs> and then my last book that I got is something I've been meaning to read for so long and it is Maurice by E.M. Forrester Again, I have not read any Forrester before. This will be my first one. This is really the only one that I've ever been interested in picking up from him because it's set in Cambridge and um, it's about two gay men. Um, but obviously because of the time period, etc., etc., they um, are not like openly gay, but they have an interesting relationship. And I'm just so excited to read this. I think I'm really going to like it. And... I don't know, I, I like reading books set in Cambridge, as cliche and cheesy as it sounds, and I like this edition. It's not actually like a vintage edition, um, but it looks kind of vintage-y, it's kind of yellowed. Um, this is obviously like a used copy. Most of these are used copies, by the way, uh, except for like the, the first two books I showed, because uh, they're new. But yes, this is Maurice. I hmm, Maybe I will read this in April, I don't know, I'm really tempted to read it. Um, if not in April, I will definitely read it in May, so expect a review of this soon. I finally reached the end of my haul. I hope that this video is short and it wasn't too long-winded rambly. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with um, a April, yeah, <laughs> April books video. I thought it was going to be May for some reason. April books video. I've had probably the best reading month that I've had. Um, so far this year so it's gonna be a good video i have a lot of very high four star and five star reads so yes i will catch you in my next video thank you for watching again and bye